The video you are about to watch contains major spoilers for the game Fire Emblem Three Houses. If you have not played the game yet, turn back now. You have been warned. Sorry, I, I just want to be so clear about this. The story of this game is freaking great and best experienced blind. This video contains minor spoilers for every route, but major spoilers for one route in particular. I'm sure you can tell by looking at the thumbnail which one it is. So, please, if you have not played this game yet, do yourself a favor and hit that X button and go do something else. Or better yet, go buy the game right now and come back in like 60 hours when you're done. Alright? Got it? Good. Now, with that out of the way, let's actually get started. Look, I just got. Uh, ah, I gotcha. Oh, you, my friend, have been pranked. You didn't really think I was going to include a third spoiler warning, did you? No, 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 no. This video is probably way too long as it is, and I don't got time for three spoiler warnings. That would be excessive. Although, I guess now that you mention it, I could have just, in the time it took me to do this whole bit, done the third spoiler warning for real, huh? Yeah, that would probably be, that probably would have been smart, yeah. I should probably stop talking. How's it going, Chip Tribe? It's me, Chips, here with another episode of the Chip Tide Show. And this one is a special one. We are playing one of my favorite games in recent memory, and maybe even one of my favorites of all time. It's a game that everyone watching this has played before, right? You know it. You love it. It's Fire Emblem Three Houses. So let's hit that itch. Oh, oh right, I, uh, I already did it. Oh, let's see, that's how I usually uh, transition out of these little intro segments, so, uh... Tell you what, Richard, hit him with a star wipe. So before we get into this video, I just want to preface something. I have never played a Fire Emblem game before this one. So all you longtime hardcore fans out there, don't judge me too much. I went into this game with no real expectations of what it was going to be like, but I came out the other side... A changed man. So I know everyone here has already played through this game several times, right? So I'm sure by now that you know this game takes place in the lovely Garrig Mach Monastery, located smack dab in the middle of the continent of Fodlin. And before you say it, yes, I know, it's Hogwarts. It looks like Hogwarts, it's got houses, you can learn magic there, and this guy is literally just Severus Snape. I get it. But, this place does have a bunch of things that make it different. For one, it's not just a school, it's also basically this world's equivalent of the Vatican being home to the Church of Saros. And, it is also somehow far more dangerous than Hogwarts, seeing as they send their students into active battle on the weekly, but we'll get back to that one later. But since everyone here has played this game already, I won't waste your time setting up the world and everything like I usually do. Instead, I'll answer the question that I know is on all your minds. The game's called Three Houses, so which house did I choose? Well, let's run down the list, shall we? First up is the Black Eagle's House, home to students of the Adrestian Empire and led by the Imperial Princess herself, Edelgard von Hressvelg. And no, I didn't know how to pronounce that until I heard it read out loud either. When you first meet her, she seems nice enough, if not a little strict. But, as the game goes on, and I would say spoilers again, but I feel like that bit is getting old, you realize that she is actually a stone-cold killer 
who doesn't know how to use her words to solve her problems and instead chooses to terrorize Fodlin in a mask and starts a war that cost lives of thousands that could have easily been avoided. Shots fired. All you Edelgard fans out there who are going to the comments as we speak to try to explain to me why she's actually the good guy and didn't do anything wrong, get tossed. You're probably the same people who are like, yeah, you know what, Thanos kind of had a point, didn't he? When he most definitely did not. Look, Richard, I don't want to hear it. Just because an antagonist is sympathetic does not mean they're not evil. Alright? So sorry, Black Eagles, but it's a no for me, dog. My feelings about Edelgard aside, the next house is the Blue Lions. This house represents the people of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus and is led by the prince himself, because of course it is, Dimitri Alexandre Belated. Dimitri is a stone cold killer who- oh, oh wait. But his love for a sadistic murder aside, Dimitri is the most serious man you will ever meet in your entire life. Like seriously, this man could watch one of those commercials with the sad puppies and not even flinch. He is no joke. And if you haven't noticed yet, seriousness isn't really my style, so I'll take a pass on the Blue Lions. So that just leaves the third and final house, the Golden Deer. The house for students from the Leicester Alliance and led by the grandson of the Alliance's leader, Claude Von Regan. And this man, this man, let me tell you, he is a holy pillar of justice whose whole character arc basically revolves around him saying, hey, you know how pretty much everyone on this continent is like, super racist yeah we're gonna just end all that and he freaking does on top of that he's super funny cares for his friends above all else and the performance by voice actor joe zija is top notch what can i say he's the ultimate underdog edelgard and dimitri have a whole backstory together and an extremely tumultuous relationship making claude seem like he would be the third wheel and the whole game, everyone just underestimates him saying, Ah, oh, man, Claude's just a jokester, loves him some good schemes, he ain't no big threat. And you know what he does? He uses his little jokes and schemes to end a war, trick shot the devil, and ends racism in a few months. Look, I know I've established that Captain Toad is and will always be my favorite video game character of all time, but Claude is such a close second. Uh, sorry, Rabbit Peach. So, yeah, I hereby declare my allegiance to the undisputed best house, the Golden Deer. Now, have I played the other two houses before? Yeah, I've played through all the houses. And did these routes unveil super interesting and fleshed out backstories for Edelgard and Dimitri that made them some of the most interesting characters in the game? Kind of a weird question, but sure. Yeah, but are their names Claude Von Regan? Didn't think so. But the Golden Deer isn't a class of one. Oh, no, no, far from it. No, no, no. Just look at this band of winners that are the Golden Deer students. You've got Hilda, a lazy girl who always tries to get others to do her work for her, but when she actually tries and applies herself, she puts in the work Leone is probably the most hardworking person on the planet. Raphael, just all around nice guy who, mark my words, is going to grow out to be Santa Claus. And then you've got Lawrence, who starts off a conceited and entitled jerk and ends off, well, a uh, little less of a conceited and entitled jerk. Then there's Marianne, who suffers from a terrible lack of self-confidence because everyone thinks she's basically a werewolf, but then she learns to say, you know what? I don't care what you think. I'm the best. Lysithia has a major chip on her shoulder because she's the youngest student at the academy and will put in as much work as she needs to to prove that she is not just a kid. She also has a heartbreaking backstory that is super important to the central plot of the whole game but more importantly is secretly a tactical nuke in disguise. Like seriously this kid can take people out. And then there's Ignatz who well 
I'll get back to him later. Now, I already played through the Golden Deer route. In fact, it was the first route that I did. But this time, I have a plan to make it a bit more interesting. For starters, we're playing on hard mode. I've never tried anything higher than normal before, but I feel like I'm pretty experienced at this point, so it shouldn't be too bad. Aside from the difficulty, there are two other modes of play, casual or classic. Basically, it's whether you want to play with permadeath or not. And for this, I'm doing classic, and I highly recommend that you do the same. Now, I'm not the kind of person who will be like, Oh, you play on casual mode? You must be a lesser human being than me. Get good, mate. No, 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 no. If you want to play casual, by all means, go. But I will say that having the threat of losing my precious students for good constantly looming over me added a lot to the overall emotion and experience of the game and made me feel even more connected to all of them. But on that note, that brings me to my first goal. During my first playthrough, I lost Ignatz very early on, and it still haunts me to this day. At this point, he's pretty much the only character in the game that I have yet to learn the backstory and personality of. But this time is Ignatz's redemption. I will keep him alive at all costs. I will protect him like my own son. I will make him a hero. So that's goal number one. Goal number two, on the other hand, is a little more ambitious. So there is a system in the game where you can recruit students from other houses as well as the academy faculty to your own house. Most people will probably recruit a handful of people throughout the game, but for this run, I want to recruit everyone. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone. Okay, well. You can't recruit the other house leaders and their second in commands, but aside from that, no one is safe. Now, at first I thought this was going to be a massive undertaking, because the way the game tells you to recruit people is a pretty big hassle. But then I remembered that New Game Plus is a thing, and it's broken. So if you forgot or didn't know yet, there are two ways to recruit units. The first is to excel in specific stats that the units prefer, and then you can simply ask them to join. The second, and far easier way, is to get at least a B-level support with them, and eventually they'll just ask to join you. Now, there are a lot of ways to raise support, but in New Game Plus, you can just buy all of your support ranks from your previous playthroughs right from the start, and they'll all flock to your house in droves. So, here's what I did. I did a regular playthrough of the Black Eagles route. Then, for my Blue Lions playthrough, I did New Game Plus, bought all my support for the Black Eagles, and recruited them all. So, by the end of that playthrough, I had at least a B rank support level with everyone from the other two houses. So now, all I have to do is start New Game Plus with the data from that save file, and I'm golden. Pun definitely intended. Pause. So, that was the plan. Now, I'm not sure if I messed something up when starting the New Game Plus file, or if they somehow made it so you can't game the system like that, but when I went to buy all the support, it only allowed me to do it for my original Black Eagles run. Not a huge problem, raising the support of all the Blue Lions isn't that hard, but not as smooth of a ride as I thought. Okay, now back to the episode. Oh, and uh, for the faculty, you can just recruit them once you've gotten to a certain point in the game, so no problem there. A lot of people are using the hashtag fear the deer when showing their support for the good house itself, but I'm here to tell you that unless your name is Edelgard, Hubert, Dimitri, or Dudu, there is no need for fear. So let's get a new hashtag going. Hashtag we're all the deer. Together there is no enemy we cannot defeat. No hurdle this deer cannot leap. United we stand, divided we fall, all that good stuff. But that is only step one of goal number two. Because while I'm going to recruit everyone, I'll use no one. 
I experimented with using a l huge team in the past, and it's honestly kind of a hassle. So, aside from a few extra units to fill out the rank, I'm rolling with the OG Deer. Now, you may wonder, what is the point of recruiting everyone if you're not going to use them? And, it's a power play. Plain and simple. Imagine your Edelgard embarking on a massive crusade against the rest of the world, only to realize that all your friends left you for a better house months ago just to sit on the sidelines. That is some serious mind games right there. But in all seriousness, there's a point later in the game where you have to fight and potentially kill former students from the other house, and it is by far the worst part of the game. And by worst, I mean... I hate doing it because it's heartbreaking and actually demonstrates how well this game establishes characters, so in that sense, it's one of the best parts of the game. But if everyone's just chilling in my house, I don't have to worry about it. So those are my two goals for this, but I don't think I could have picked a better segue to the next thing I want to talk about, the story. I'm a sucker for a good story in games, and this one is one of the best I have ever experienced. A actually, let me rephrase that. The story itself is pretty good. It's got its fair share of cool moments and twists that actually made my jaw drop, and the three different houses actually have very different plots, not just a few simple changes, which is awesome. It does have a few plot holes and weird bits that happen, like the whole setup of how you and your pops are basically dragged to the monastery against your will, and the principal just sort of makes you a teacher on the spot without even asking, and you all just kind of accept it. But aside from that, it's pretty cool. But what takes this game above and beyond is its characters. I already talked about a few of them, but that's only scratching the surface. Each house has nine students in it, but there's also the other teachers, the Knights of Saros, the Archbishop Rhea, the mysterious Sedeth and Flane, the all-powerful yet down-to-earth slumbering goddess Sothis who's living inside your head, and that's not even it. You'd think with this many characters, most of them would be pretty underdeveloped and uninteresting. Well, you'd be dead wrong, and that's all thanks to a little thing called support conversations. As the support levels between different characters grow, you can unlock little cutscenes of them talking to each other. There are literally hours of these things, and they reveal so much about each character's backstory, personality, morals, goals. It's insane. And every single line in the game is fully voice acted, which is great because not only would reading this much text get old quick, but the excellent performances just add that much more to the characterization. I can honestly say I don't think I've cared more about a fictional character than the ones found in this game across any medium. It really made me feel like these characters were my real students and colleagues and that I was really helping them and watching them grow as people. That's why I recommend you play on casual mode because losing a unit that you've spent so much time learning about and growing close to is one of the most heartbreaking things I've experienced in a game. And the same can be said for when you have to kill a student from the enemy side yourself. It just goes to show the sheer potential that video games have to tell emotional stories when compared to books or movies, and I love it. The music in this game is also killer, and it takes the story that much higher still. The battle themes get my heart pounding, the emotional themes make me want to cry, and the song Edge of Dawn might just be the best song to ever come from a video game. Seriously, if you don't know which one I'm talking about, look it up. It's the one with lyrics, it's about Edelgard, and it almost makes me see why people like her so much. Almost. But here's the thing with games. You can have the best story in the world, but it doesn't mean anything if the gameplay doesn't hold up. Not sure how I managed to make it this far into the video without even talking about the basic gameplay mechanics, but here we go. So your time spent in the game is split into two different portions. There's time exploring the monastery and the battles themselves. The monastery is massive, and there's a couple of things you can do there like talking to everyone, having meals with people, going fishing, stuff like that. At first, it was all a little overwhelming, but after a while, I figured it out. 
But if I'm being honest, having to go back to the monastery every single month to do what is essentially busy work did get a little tiring after a while. But I got pretty good at breezing through all those segments so I could get to the really fun part, the battles. The battles play, as you might have guessed, like a tactical strategy game. When I first saw the grid-based movement system, I thought it might be similar to Mario Plus Rabbids, a game that I've played on the show before, go check it out when you're done with this, but it's actually quite different because you're far more limited in your movement options. The beginning battles aren't too bad, but the later game battles are intense, especially on hard mode, and it's easy to lose track of a unit and get them killed if you're not careful. Luckily, you can turn back time a few times per battle if you do mess up, but sometimes you get yourself into a situation where you just flat out messed up and someone's gone for good. From what I found, battles are more about adapting to increasingly challenging situations on the battlefield, learning the different strengths and weaknesses of your units, and taking your time to make sure nobody dies. It's intense, it's challenging, and it's super fun. There's also a crazy amount of variety in the classes you can use. You've got your classic close range fighters with a variety of weapons to use, magic users, healers, and the insanely busted flyers and mounted units who can move crazy distances in a single turn. My personal favorite units are the support ones with all sorts of movement tech, like the warp and rescue abilities, which can transport units to different spaces on the map before they even move, or the dancer, who has the broken ability to let one unit move twice in the same turn. It's super fun to experiment with different strategies and classes, and you can be pretty flexible in the units that you decide to use for specific classes. They even do a good job furthering the plot during the course of battle, leading to some pretty crazy moments. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the hilarious zingers that everyone throws out when they land critical hits or knock someone out. It's some pretty savage stuff, and I love it. There are a ton of story-based battles in the game, with pretty much endless more side ones, and yet I don't think I'll ever get tired of leading my precious golden deer to victory. So, we're nearing the end of the episode, so you're probably wondering... How'd I do? Well, you'll be glad to hear that I did indeed recruit everyone, used barely any of them, and I kept my precious little Ignatz alive the whole time, and I'm glad to say that he did not disappoint. And I have to say, even though this is my fourth time playing through the game in the few months that I've had it, it's still a ton of fun, especially since I got to play with my boy Claude and the rest of the Golden Deers once again. I would tell you to go and play this game if you haven't already, because I literally cannot recommend it enough, but I already did that at the top of the episode, and if you made it this far in the video, you've either played the game before, or you're some kind of crazed anarchist. So I'll just end off this video right here. Hey, wait, wait, what, what Richard? What? You haven't played the Golden Deer route yet? You only did the Black Eagle route? Were you not listening at the beginning of the episode? You, you know, when I did the whole spoiler warning three times? No? Get out. You're fired. No, no, act, actually, actually, you know what? You're rehired. As your boss, I demand that you go and play the Golden Deer route right now. Do not stop until you are finished. I'm serious. Get to it. I don't want to see your face around here again until you can recite Claude's speech from the end of the game word for word. You know... The one where Nemesis is all like, You lack the courage to challenge me in lone combat! And Claude is all like, Yet we have the strength to scale the walls between us! To reach out our hands in friendship so we can open our true hearts to one another! That's how we win! Oh, chills. Every time, I tell you. Oh, dang it! I just gave it to you, didn't I? Ah, what? You know what? Doesn't matter. I don't see a switch in your hand, and that's a problem. I swear to God, I... Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of yet another episode of the Chip Tide Show. 
I can't believe that I've done 10 of these already, but there's still three more to go in season one, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single bit of the action. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Chip Tide, link in the description below, so you can keep up to date on all things Chip Tide. I upload new episodes of the show every three weeks on Thursdays at 2 p.m. EST, so keep an eye out because the next one is something special. You don't want to miss it. So, I will see you all then, but until then, don't forget to take it easy. Having fun, are we? Good. Enjoy yourself while you still can, your majesty.